Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Well done, OP. Thanks for sharing this entertaining story of turning the tables on a Karen. May your future shopping trips be free of such dramatic encounters. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. I lived the dream. I've been reading stories for a long time, and I, like many others, ponder about what I would do in that situation. Well, a few years ago, I read of a man at a landscaping store loading his truck with some product when Wild Karen grabbed him, causing him to drop and break what he was loading. Said Karen then laid into him about loading some bags of damp fertilizer or peat moss type of thing into her SUV. Rather than argue, he loaded them all into the back of her pristine SUV and proceeded to cut each one open on the bottom royally soiling her status symbol. Last month, I was at our local very big home improvement chain in our region of the country. There's a big indoors where you load your shopping cart and an even bigger open and covered outside area for the bulkier, dirtier, heavier items. They have a sample of each one near the service desk where they check stock and fill out a loading form of everything you want. You pay for your carted items as well as your yard items and they staple the loading sheet to your receipt. You then drive around the building, show the guard your sheet to get into the yard, which is what I just did. The load sheet's important as it has all of the SKUs on it for you to match with the ones on each product area as some products are very similar looking. You can load yourself or there are plenty of employees to help. I had to pick through them as many were chipped or split and was daydreaming about how the project, when our well-known protagonist, the Karenus Crepolius, slithers in stage right and pulled on my sleeve, causing a paver to tilt onto one I just loaded and chipped the corner off. Like all the Karen Crapaponuses prior, I was dumbfounded as she was screeching the yada yada, pay attention, respect my authority, service me now song of her people. She must have thought I could not possibly drive a Yukon, so I must be a slow moving, lowly employee whose sole purpose is to kiss her Crapolius. While her off-key caterwauling rose a couple of octaves, she thrust her loading slip quite forcefully into my chest, demanding I hurry up and load her precious cargo of some other style landscaping lunacy into her SUV. Learning well, she did at the school of Karen as she promptly, on cue, spun around and started wailing into her phone at another one of her kind. My mind was in overdrive. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I'm really gonna get to do it and dump a load into her Karen carriage. But just then I had an epiphany pop right into my brain. They just happened. I can't do anything about it. I got into my truck and drove off. She never looked back. I got to the exit gate and had to show the guard my loading slip to get out and for my protection, they opened my truck and verified that my count wasn't accidentally off by a hundred or so extra pavers. I was cleared by the keeper of the yard and drove out with Karen's loading slip and receipt in my pocket that security cameras would show her assaulting and battering me with as she gave it to me. Now, without said royal document, no employee can nor will help her load anything, nor can she get out of the prison yard without it. Skyrooed herself well, she did. I pulled around and found an area through the fence where I could see her now dragging two actual employees around, yelling and yakking, pacing and pointing, leering and looking for that lazy, no good employee of myself who vanished like a fart in the wind. I've had various issues to correct things like this. They have to go back into the service desk and void out the original receipt that she didn't have, which involved unscanning everything from her cart and then rescanning it all back onto a new receipt and then making a new loading slip. Not a fast or enjoyable thing to go through, especially for a Karen with the patience of a Kraken. She could then, with her papers in order, again drive through the guard post and finally get a real employee to load her precious cargo and finally out of there and crawl into her Karen cave. As I was leaving, another epiphany fifed its way into my head. I took her paperwork, put it into a shopping cart, and buried it into the cart corral. Soon, some corraller of carts will find it and turn it into the manager, who will immediately know that Karen lost it herself and not the fictitious employee who was the man who never returned, and his fate is still unlearned. I thought you were going to say you drove around back, picked up her order, and took it home. And our second story. Bye-bye, dear neighbor. I'm in my late 20s and live alone, and I really hate kids. 
My neighborhood's a group of separate houses without yards that are spaced close to each other. I've lived here for five years by myself, and it's perfect. Everything I've ever wanted. No yards to take care of, no kids around making noise. The houses share a large T-shaped cement driveway, and none of us have ever interacted with each other. We come and go, stay quiet, mind our own business. There's a small park down the street with grass for those who want it, literally a 30-second walk away. About a year ago, a guy with a lot of little kids moved into my neighborhood. As always, I just drove past him like anyone else and closed my garage. Never spoke to him, no problem. Over time, he started making himself at home. He would park his large truck in the motor court, which has a sign saying it's illegal because it's a fire lane. It'd block his neighbor's garage across from him. He would set up lawn chairs in front of his neighbor's garage and have the little kids out there running and screaming right in front of people's houses and garages. So we'd have to listen to it and then try not to run over the children as we back our cars out of the garages. He would rev his motorcycle at 8 a.m. on a Saturday and wake up the neighborhood. When his kids would be blocking the driveway, they take their sweet time moving. Because of this, I did one simple thing. When I would come home every day and drive past or around them, I wouldn't wave back when he waved at me. Oh, how that hurt his pride. He should have left it at that. But no, he had to press the issue, so he started waving more, and then shouting at me as I drove past, and then telling his kids to stop and stand and wave at me as I always drove past and ignored them all. Until eventually, he didn't like how I drove around his kids that were in the way, even though I always drive at a safe, slow speed there, so he tried to confront me. He shouted at my car, then came to my garage as I was already getting out of the car and had the garage closing, so it closed right in his face without me ever looking at him. LMAO. He didn't like that, so he immediately walked to my front door, saw that I had a doorbell camera, and turned around and walked away. A couple days later, coming home, he was crossing the driveway as I arrived, and because he had told the kids to stop and wave at me, the dip crap stopped in the middle, so he stood in my way to block my car while trying to get the kids to move, so I honked for three seconds right in his face until he moved. That was our last interaction, and I decided he's annoyed me enough. I live in an HOA. I don't actually care about any of the rules, but I decided to use them all to report him endlessly for every violation I knew of, using my dash cam on my car for screenshots with evidence. His parking in the motor court stopped after they gave him a ticket. He had to throw out the child's playhouse he'd set up next to his garage. I kept reporting him for having an open garage door that I don't actually care about in order to get him to have to stop hanging out in the motor court. And oh, I don't know, use his brain and take the kids down the street to the park. Only took four months of reporting him repeatedly, and he just moved out. I was fully prepared to name you the a-hole here because 99% of the time, HOA people are monsters and people with kids do have to exist somewhere. But to be honest, it seemed like you were fully prepared to deal with all that, except this guy's a jerk. And our next story. When your company asks you to email them every time you want USB access in company laptops. So I was once sent out as an on-site software programmer to join a crew working at a ride construction site. They gave me a laptop with some limited space and an old one terabyte external drive with extra data on it, the kind which needed an external power supply to run. Factors in later. Now there are two things which are worth noting about the company. Extremely tech unfriendly, not many tech people in the company, very bureaucratic, even in the face of emergency. So as a programmer, I was subject to the same laptop restrictions as say a sales rep or a business op, which is really unfair when you have to work closely with an on-site team. And they had blocked transfer on all plain text files, which is what all source code files happen to be. I was told I'd have to email the admin staff every time I wanted to plug in the USB drive. The admin would validate with my department and they would generate for me a one-time password for that USB session, which was unique to that device. That really annoyed the hell out of me because I knew I would have a lot of copying, backing up to do every now and then, so I came up with a plan. I'd use the password to grant USB access to the drive, copy a few files, then I'd cut power to it and reconnect it. New session, new password needed, new email sent. I told them that it being a construction site, power was very unstable, and the drive they gave me kept disconnecting because it needed external power. I did this every 10 to 15 minutes, maybe about 50 to 60 times a day for three days. 
At the end of the third day, the admin head called me himself to grant me admin rights to the laptop so that I could disable the monitoring software for the rest of the trip. When I went back, they held a meeting to review on-site policies for technical and support visits. Edit. I really didn't make this clear, I think. Usually, admin blocked USB access outright. In my case, after requesting, they allowed USB access, but they applied the policy usually reserved for sales reps, which blocks documents, videos, etc. from being transferred to or from anywhere, which included plain text. It was an urgent short-term trip to complete this project, which was going to run on an isolated system, so setting up an elaborate delivery was pretty much overkill. And the internet access on site was pretty terrible anyway. I don't actually have a problem with putting in security measures to disallow unknown USB devices from being plugged in. I think that's required. But a device they already verified and vetted? That's a bit much. Edit 2. This is actually from some time ago. Things have been better since then and a couple of other incidents. We get encrypted drives with passwords at least and no dinosaur external drives. Oh God, the security policies at your work is so horrible. Sometimes it needs that kind of determination to show how inconvenient stupid policies needs to be revoked. And our last story. Try to stop me building one house? I build two instead and block neighbor's view. So I bought a house in the UK that has a large piece of land in the back garden. Almost all other houses in the street had houses built in their gardens, easily 90%, so I thought this would be a no-brainer on getting planning permission from the local city government to build one house. What I didn't anticipate was the neighborhood busybody curtain twitcher living next door to me. Let's call her Karen. K. K tried everything in her power to stop me. She organized a Neighborhood Residents Association hate campaign to complain to local politicians to prevent the planning permission being granted to build the house. She lied her butt off and talked about how if the house was built, traffic would increase and small children would be run over. Insane lies. I spent three years fighting Kay and the local residents association and the politicians, a long, painful and expensive battle. But I won. Eventually, I got my planning to build one house. But what Kay failed to realize was that I was working with two other neighbors with land to the rear of their houses to ensure all three of us would get planning permission to build houses on our respective rear gardens. Neighbor J was the left-hand side of busybody neighbor K, I was on the right-hand side of busybody K, and neighbor M was to the right of my property, as below. J house, K house, I house, M house. After planning permission to build houses on our respective rear gardens was granted, I bought the land to the rear of J house. I then built two houses, one behind J house and one behind I house. Now every morning when Kay opens her bedroom rear window curtains and looks into her backyard, there is poking up a middle finger, house, to the left of her backyard, and a middle finger, house, to the right of her backyard. F you, Kay. Enjoy the view. Just imagine looking out your window one day and seeing a building flipping you off. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.